if you are one of the many who said this year I'm going to get in better shape, you may have a goal like me to run another 5K this year. Maybe my goal originally was a 10K this year. You know, everything's possible, mm -hmm. right? Yes, that. I think so. But make sure you're doing it right safely. Today, Dr. Matthew Axman, a sports medicine specialist from the Spectrum Health Medical Group, is here with some advice to dub avoiding running injuries that send you from 5K to the couch. We That's don't right. want to do that. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, it's kind of the reverse of what we hear from the couch to the 5K. Exactly. You want to really make sure that we don't reverse that trend here because it's kind of slow and steady, right? I exactly. And what you want to do when you're going and trying to do one of these runs is you've got to come up with a goal. You've got to look at the time frame of saying, well, this is what my run is going to be and come up with a program of what you're going to do. And it's, if it's a 5K, it's not going, all right, I'm going to run this 5K in a week and get that way. It's going to be a point where you're going to have to build up about four weeks, five, six weeks, really to train for this 5K so that you don't run into injuries and do a program. It's important that the programs that you do, there's a lot of them online that you can find in regards to finding these programs to really build up so that you're not doing it incorrectly, but you're doing a proper training program. A lot of it incorporates starting at slow runs, building up the speed, building up the distance, backing down, going back to a greater distance, as well as having rest breaks in between. The rest is really important. It's not running every day, but it's resting at least once a week, if not in between some of those long runs to prevent those injuries. So for somebody who hasn't run a 5K or anything in a long time, I'm thinking of myself, I used to be a runner when I was younger. So I know part of the memory is like, well, I used to do this, so I could probably do it again. Um, would you also recommend kind of brisk walking to get going and then take that walk into a run? That's not a bad idea. Anytime that you can condition yourself and do something where you're just not starting off from that couch right. to go into that 5K, if you condition yourself with walking, it's going to be that much easier to get into that 5K mode than if you're just starting out cold and starting running right away. Okay, so we talk about maybe some of those injuries that a, uh, a new or couch potato kind of a runner may be prone for. These can be some really serious issues involving the legs, the shins, the feet even, and the knees. Yes, there's a lot of different injuries that runners can run into, if you will. Um, a couple of them are runner's knee. It's a fancy term called patellofemoral pain syndrome. It's basically the way that the kneecap tracks along the thigh bone. If you have a muscle imbalance, if your running gait is an abnormal gait, you can run into this problem and it can really halt your training and cause you to have lots of pain. Other things is you can get shin splints, which is an abnormal pull of the muscle in the lower leg. You can get stress fractures, you can get tendon issues, ligament issues. If your gait is off, if you're training too hard, if you're training improperly, you can run into a whole wealth of different problems when you're training that can cause you to have to stop that training and completely miss your run completely. You know, we talked earlier with you about uh, plantar fasciitis, and I know that's something that people who maybe train indoors on treadmills or on ellipticals can really be prone to get. How do you recommend someone who maybe has that diagnosis get through it? Well, when you take a look at something similar to plantar fasciitis, there's a reason on why you have it. And so it's really important to take a look at why you develop that plantar fasciitis. Typically, it's a couple of things. Number one, it's the gait that you're training at. Uh, it's the improper techniques that you're doing. You may be turning your foot in, turning your foot out, striking your foot incorrectly. The other thing is proper footwear also, whether you need some arch support, whether you're wearing the correct shoes or not, because if you're not doing that, it's putting that abnormal pull, that abnormal stress through the foot and can cause you to have those mechanics that are changed and then in turn cause you to have that pain. And you know, when you're starting out and you're not sure, your doctor says, okay, go slowly, do this, but you start feeling some of these things. I know for a lot of people it's like, oh, I can't do it. I got bad knees or this hurts too much. There's a way to strengthen that. I mean, it's not impossible. Pain doesn't necessarily mean you can't run. Correct. The, one of the important things you want to take a look at is if your pain lasts for more than a couple of days, it's really important to get in and see your doctor for an evaluation because you're going to have some of these pains, some sore, some achiness as you're doing some of these runs and working out. But if it's something that doesn't go away with a couple of days of rest, some ice, some anti-inflammatories, it's something that may be a little bit more uh, of a concern 
that's going to cause you to miss that race, such as stress fractures, some of, such as some of these other diagnoses that we talked about that aren't going to go away unless you address them properly. And let's talk about maybe some health concerns that people may have, aside from just maybe our lower extremities, people who may be overweight, people who have been sedentary. Is it important that you check with your doctor if you haven't done something like this? It's very important that you check with your doctor to make sure that you're heart healthy, lung healthy, just physically healthy for this activity. It's definitely good for everybody to get out and get some exercise, but to start at the proper levels to get that exercise to help lose that weight. Uh, when you have uh, conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and you start going to exercise also, one of the other important factors is, is you're going to get healthy. That's going to lower your blood pressure. That's going to lower your blood sugar. So if you're on medications for those, you may need to have those adjusted because you're going to get healthier. You're going to get off those medications, yeah. and you don't want to be on those. So it's definitely, if you're a sedentary person and you want to get healthy, make sure you check with your doctor first before you start a program so that they can monitor you closely for all of those medical conditions. And if someone wants to get a hold of you, a sports medicine specialist, I know we have your information on how people can get a hold of you. It's like, you know, sometimes you just even don't know where to start. I know I want to do it, you know, you, you get kind of going, there's races all the time in our community, so here's some information if people want to get a hold of you. And I always say, it's not a bad thing if you have to walk it. Exactly. <laughs> Just do something. Any activity is good activity. Fantastic. Thanks, Dr. Axman. Thank you. Thank we'll you. be right back.